Hey. <laughs> so, I'm here making another astrology video, as you can tell. A different camera angle, because I have to charge, have this thing plugged in to charge and whatever. Um, today, I am planning to talk about Saturn and Pisces which made its transit around the full moon in Virgo. And I, um, it, it ingressed around the time of the full moon in Virgo into Pisces. So, and I made a video about that about a month ago. But I went back and watched that video and I realized that, I mean, I kind of included it into, I was saying that I was kind of doing this thing and, it was maybe arguable how much of what I was talking about was really even related to the astrology, but that there's something about the solidity of Saturn and the kind of wateriness, the liquidity of Neptune and Pisces that to me, I felt was relevant to this discussion that's all about the materialism versus this kind of like, you can't hold on to it kind of thing, this sort of fluidity kind of thing, right? And the... Um, but I was talking about that in terms of the way we approach. I was on the. I was making. I made like four or five videos about Rick Tarnas and archetypal astrology, and about um, this idea that I'm trying to develop that's bringing in influences from Graham Harmon's object-oriented ontology, as well as. Federico Campagna's Technic and Magic, as well as, um, I don't know, a number, taking courses from J.F. Martel, also how, how, because introduced me to some of these um, writers that I wasn't aware of before, and um, yeah, anyways, <laughs> there's, um, when you put all that together, there's something going on that I don't want to talk about too much in this video. I the video I made the other day, I was talking about Kate Bush's cloud busting, though, and the idea of what happens when the sun is part of an actual kind of synchronicity where it's like there's a meaningful experience just but just based on weather phenomena. The, like the sun comes out of a cloudy, stormy day, and it has a kind of... This thing I'm just feeling sensitive to these days is even if the sun doesn't come out, there's something interesting about stormy, dark clouds that have this this heaviness that it feels emotionally heavy it feels resonance resonant to see stormy clouds and it and then it also see, feels resonance to feel the warmth of the sun and stuff like this and then jf in his courses talks about like when the sun comes if you're out camping or whatever and the sun comes up in the morning there's this like thankfulness for the sun or what you know there's these kind of spiritual these very basic like natural phenomena that we deal with every day with the sun and the moon and things like this and and uh weather and stuff like this, but they can have be loaded with this sort of ascetic kind of thing going on. And But the idea is that what if the sun was its, an actual being, right? What if the sun, we didn't just, there's some sort of mystery to the sun, that it was not, it's not just about, like I'm thinking the worship of the sun, the sun god and all this kind of stuff. This is just an idea that I have, but I'm, I don't want to, I want to make a video today on Saturn and Pisces and not get too hung up on that idea. But this, the, the, what I'm trying to say is to appreciate the, the planets as actual objects that, that are... I mean, there's a myth, though, right? There's myths and stories about different gods that we've associated. We've named planets after gods and assigned them these divine... But the, but the actual planet itself is this thing that has a... These just, they're just big objects in a way. They're, just, they're the biggest objects on the block. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we're like, so, and they are mysterious and they, and, and there's some sort of, th when they're in alignment, things happen for some reason, right? I don't explain to notes. I don't here to tell you the mechanism, right? But I was, um, once, we've gone through all this thing where there's been all these ingresses, all these planets have changed signs and I'm feeling like, it's a bit, it feels a bit discombobulating because you're used to a certain dynamic and now it's sort of like, oh, okay, it's one of these moments where in, like, in, I think it's a Buddhist thing where it's like the new moment. Okay, fresh new moment. Here we go. I'm making a new video. Who knows what's going to come out, right? <laughs> it's like the, but the, um, there's something about this, I feel like the best way 
I if you want to if you want to not get bogged down in all my silly philosophical stuff that I do, and let's let's do some like real astrology here for once, right? Um, <laughs> then the Saturn and Pisces. A lot, like I said, one of the problems is with is doing things piecemeal, where we just talk about well, this is what Sat the archetype of Saturn means, this is what the archetype of Pisces means, and you know, there's a lot you can do with that, right? But one of the things that helps t is to understand that Jupiter has just been in Pisces, and that preceding Jupiter in Pisces, we had a grand conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn that happened in Aquarius. I think it also is also in Capricorn too, though, to be honest. It was more like Capricorn, and they, they kind of like went together in Capricorn and then came through in Aquarius. And around that time was when the pandemic really hit, right? And I don't want to be, well, you know, I don't mean doom and gloom or anything like this, uh, to have a balanced perspective and stuff like that. But one of the interesting things, um, or not to be like too paranoid about the, like maybe the government are doing things on purpose or something like I don't, I don't whatever who knows what kind of people follow my channel what kind of views you guys have but there I there is something where the grand conjunctions um, there's one in the 80s right there's a grand conjunction in the 80s I've got friends you know this is funny like you you guys if you're the same age as like Adam Ellen Boss and these guys just a few years older than me you guys were born during the Grand Conjunction in the 80s, right? And during this Grand Conjunction, that was the birth of the Reagan-Thatcher era, right? And there's this whole political thing that was going on at the time that put a new kind of politics into effect that we just kind of... Like, I think I mean, a lot of people take it for granted that this is just the normal way we do things, right? That, but this was something that was really put into effect at a certain period of time, and that was when these two planets were together, and now there's a sort of, like, kind of a paranoia going around, where people are like, the Great Reset, and there's a grand scheme that they're ordering society, and all this, and it's like, what, who knows how consciously or intentionally the people in power are doing this, but it, it does actually align with these transits that are s similar to what happened in the 80s with Reagan Thatcher, it's similar to what happened in the, um, I think there was an interval in between, obviously, where there was the, um, I'd have, I'm not prepared to talk about September 11th right now, because that's not the scope of this video, but there's stuff around September 11th where it was a similar, the War of Terror was another era kind of thing, right? And I feel like we are in the, a new era, which is the post-COVID era, it's a kind of an uncertain future, and that it's kind of an interesting time to do astrology because it's like who knows what could happen and you're kind of in there predicting you know looking ahead and stuff like that and and i i'm just you know my intention is just to keep going with it right and um <clears throat> so some of the things to think about was that jupiter is a teacher first and foremost and Ju jupiter is also known to be generous, right? Jupiter gives you stuff. <laughs> so there's, the thing about Jupiter, though, Jupiter's Pisces transits were funny because it's kind of like Jupiter went into Pisces, retrograded, or did, did, I can't remember, I'm, gonna ha I'm not going to throw up my computer program, but be, due to retrogrades, it, like, Jupiter goes in, goes out, goes all the way to Aries, comes, retrogrades back, then goes, you know, it's, it's, it's not a stable, like, Jupiter just in there for a chunk of time. Jupiter is kind of whizzing around, doing all sorts of stuff. But when Jupiter's in, when Jupiter makes these Pisces transits, Jupiter has this tendency to, like, you know, activate it and sprinkle fairy dust on everything, and everything's magical, there's all this stuff happening. And I, um, don't want to come off, like, I was a bit kind of a, the Pisces is also kind of sad and sappy, and I, I feel like I wasn't really appreciating it at the time or I was appreciating it but I didn't want to put the things the things that I appreciated just on my channel so much right I don't I don't know if you can understand that or not but um yeah there, there, it has to do with these sort of things of like another sort of thing of the archetype that I'm thinking about here with Saturn and Pisces is that Saturn is often seen as a wall, right? The, and I talked about like Game of Thrones and the, the how the big wall is very Saturnian and all this kind of stuff. 
and that Pisces, obviously the ocean and the fish and everything, there's this thing about, one of the things that I also did, uh, th that I made a video, which I will put in the description, which was more of an intuitive thing, which was about, um, what was I doing? I was experimenting with different ways of making astrology videos. And one of the things is I am a musician and I like to make ambient music. And I do notice that there's certain people who make astrology videos where they'll get like, they'll put on music and they'll get like really into the, the like, you know, speak in a certain voice and make a certain, it's almost like a meditation or something. But when I watch these videos, it's kind of like, it seems like the people, like there's certain, I don't know, one of my followers, I have to admit, I'm some guy who followed my page, I, I clicked his link and started looking at the videos and I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, because I make music and I could do, but it's like the guy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sound like a jerk, I'm sorry, I, I, there's a certain kind of style of approach to new age stuff that is, I'll give you a point in case, Some someone on Discord, I don't know who this person is, I got a message this morning, They or, and they started talking to me, and they were, and I, I don't even know who this person is, or where, like, where do random people find you on Discord, I don't know, but I was like, did you find me in the weird studies group? And the person says, like, no, I'm a spiritual person. I'm not really into studies. And it's like, that's, oh, so if you are if you study stuff, you can't be spiritual? Is that what you're saying? Or that to be spiritual is necessarily to not pay attention to anything to do with the mind, of course, right? Because we meditate and stuff like this, right? Or there's this sort of, like, and this is the kind of thing where it's not, I don't know, it's not really a good foot, to, but I, I was basically, the only thing I really use Discord for these days is hanging out in the Weird Studies Discord, the other groups, I don't know, I joined a bunch of, the other stuff I'm just not as active in right now. I don't have, I don't spend that much time on Discord, right? So I was just thinking, is this where the person, the thing is, Weird Studies, they do, episodes on all the tarot cards and the person who just who's talking to me is apparently a tarot person so it's like you know if you it's not a dichotomy to study things to study the art that you apparently say you profess to practice <laughs> you know what i mean it's i don't understand why there are these these dichotomies between intellectualism and the other thing and that to, to, to have a mature appreciation of like theology or the approach to divinity it's not just a bad thing is it i don't know i mean uh, well, well, I'm still kind of, I need to get to the point here where I'm kind of, I think I got distracted by getting into that. What I was trying to get at, though, about Jupiter being, imparting gifts, imparting, is that Jupiter is like a teacher, get, Jupiter gives you stuff, Jupiter helps you out, you know, it's got that generate, but Jupiter is also kind of like Zeus in the myths, is a bit, he's kind of got this attitude, like he's, Zeus is the the ruler of all the gods and he's got shit to do and he's like he's he's he he doesn't appear to mortals or when he does appear to mortals you know he, he's usually just like causing trouble or something like that you know what I mean like he's not he doesn't there's this sort of quality about Zeus that's a bit kind of like um you know you, you if you get, can get his help it's really powerful but whether or not he actually gives a shit or not is maybe you know, there's, there's, there's this kind of indif there's like when you get to the gods there's this kind of like the powerful mighty zeus is kind of like what do you, who, the, who do you think you are what do you what, what, my help or what your, your petty little bullshit like the like zeus is you know the, there's a bigness about zeus there's a bigness about jupiter that i think it depends on what sign it is into maybe jupiter and pisces might be more compassionate and a jupiter in Sagittarius, maybe more like fire and brimstone or something. There's a different, there's this quality to Jupiter, though. I won't get too much into that, but um, what am I saying? Ju I, at least, the, I don't know how, maybe the, maybe the planet is not, is more, has this association of just being like a generous Santa Claus or something, but there, there's, a, there's a, something in the archetype that's like, yeah, we're, it's a generous Santa Claus, but you don't know all the shit we're managing here on the scale of the cosmic unity and stuff and and you know okay little human <laughs> have your little toys and go play you know like <laughs> there's, 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 there's this, that kind of attitude to jupiter where you you know if you expect you got to you got to keep your expectations from jupiter in the domain of jupiter and understand what jupiter really stands for or else you're uh you know, if you're, if you, then you're not really understanding what's going on with Jupiter, I think, right? I'm gonna, but Jupiter is now in Aries, 
right? And Jupiter is having a conjunction with Mercury right now, right? So I thought, what a great time to t talk about Saturn and Pisces when the ruler of Jupiter is having a little liaison with Mercury, the communicator, right? Perfect timing now to make a more clear video on uh, Saturn and Pisces, I would say. Maybe I'm being distracted here, right? Um, uh, okay, so this thing, I, I mentioned this thing about the wall and the water, and I made a video, an experimental video. I was making, I think, experimental. I was doing, I think about maybe I could use, what am I doing with this music stuff? Like maybe I could incorporate my music into astrology, and I made this video. I, I suddenly, it just, came out this way because I don't it was too I don't want my to my voice to compete with my music or I don't know how to put those two together right now so I just did music and I just did visual and in the process of trying to do something something just clicked and I was like holy shit that movie Blade Runner for 2049 they had this massive wall in Blade Runner but that wall is like if, if, if this thing about like global warming is real and the sea le levels do rise, there's certain places like Florida is like, you don't want to live in Florida for one thing. Florida is going to be underwater. It will be like the lost city of Atlantis, basically. <laughs> like Florida is going to be totally underwater. You don't want to live there. If that's, uh, if, if, if it's going to happen, who knows how long it will take though. Maybe you got a hundred years or something for all we know. But um, I was kind of concerned that like where I live, pretty much, uh, you know, it's not the best you know, real estate, I don't think, because if, if it, global warming does happen, it's not a good place to be uh, above water, specifically. <laughs> like, I'm technically below sea level where I live. It's not a good, you know, so, but it, who knows what, how it'll work, you know, maybe maybe I got some time, but the uh, that was kind of on my mind at the time, and um, I was looking at California, this video about it, learn more, and there's this place in California, though, that's conveniently, like, the Gulf Islands where we live, are like it's like if you had the gulf islands but you had all the water drained out of it that you have these big mountains kind of things what used to be islands and there's this gap though that you could just conveniently build a dam and so that if you know like there's this big dam that fills the gap and then you can have all your stuff not be flooded and then you have a dam that you can use conveniently for hydroelectric power and i'm like and then I was realizing that's what they were putting in this all the stuff about Blade Runner and stuff. There's also this, this Blade Runner futurism about, you know, the anxiety of environmental problems, the anxiety of all the waste that our industrial capitalism, consumer society produces, right? And what I have to admit, one of the things that I'm doing, if you notice that this video is not very good quality, um very high resolutions that I have an old iPad mini that maxes out at 720p and I also have another iPad that's 2017 that I got as a hand-me-down from my sister who I will not comment on anything about my sister for to not be passive aggressive <laughs> I'm not just kidding but I sometimes I do have to admit that I, I'm concerned about electronic waste and just going through so much consumer items and just filling up landfills with garbage right it's something that I think is important and it's one of these things if you're contributing to society you know maybe maybe you can view a contribution as making lots of stuff for people but to not to be like not filling up landfills with all this trash that you you're just trashing the planet constantly and then you know what i mean like that's another th good thing you can do um <laughs> that is like something we can work on but it's a work that goes in a different it's not a work as like let's produce lots of stuff it's a work as in let's not buy another iphone every like you know you know let's not buy another iphone every year like i've only owned one phone my entire life my like one iphone I, i'm using an iphone that's from 2017 so it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to replace it until anything breaks and I'm going to treat it in such a way that it doesn't break. And I'm going to, uh, and this is the whole thing I'm trying to talk about object oriented ontology, which is to say not to trash the planet, not to basically, not to say that the only thing that is, uh, the spirituality means to transcend the material because as Buddhists say, it's not about dying and going to heaven that it's uh, it's about being present right you're not looking for some kind of hereafter and there's this kind of, there's a basic 
ten, there's Chung Yim Trungpa talks about this. There's a basic tension between Christianity and Buddhism that Christianity has developed this idea that you're not, you're not supposed to have any fulfillment in life because you're a sinner for expecting that out of a lowly, miserable existence and that the only perfection is in heaven. So you just put up with all the oppression and stuff like that so you can die and go to heaven at the end of it. And the Buddhists say that, <laughs> like, this is it. This is it, buddy. There, you're not going to go. There's nothing else other than what, what you got here. And the, the, only, the, the only heaven that you got is not making a living hell out of the world that you live in. So we have an ethical responsibility not to just tune out and just, you know, break all our electronics and, and fill up all the landfills and become little, like, greedy, narcissistic consumer piglets. I'm sorry. So uh, <laughs> I don't mean to be so moralistic about it, but this is just how it's coming out of this one. Um, Oh man, and I don't mean to be passive aggressive, but these are things that I, um, I can't. It, this is not about personal. I don't want to make it personal. I'm just talking about if you aim it at a pattern, at a trend, at a, that that I specifically, and not make it personal about because everybody has problems with this stuff, and I obviously break things too. And no one's perfect. I don't mean to be perfectionist and, and all this kind of thing. Um, but the thing, there's this basic thing about the. As I was saying, the image of the dam wall, right? In that there can be what, uh, you know, things like crisis and opportunity and all this kind of stuff, right? That the that in if that image of having a dam wall could be something that could be very supportive, very useful for a lot of people, not just to keep the water from obliterating your whole community, but to um, to generate a kind of power to generate electricity right that that is useful for for for, for something <laughs> which is uh you know it, with the metaphor of an actual hydroelectric dam we know damn that well know what the electricity is for it brings you this video you're watching right now right so and and we build huge dams in where we live to help provide people with power. And there's a lot of politics around whether that's a good idea or not. You know, um, if you're if flooding farmland or something like that, that doesn't need to be flooded when a bunch of farmland is going to get flooded in the future anyways, right? You got to think about these kind of things, right? Um, which So that could be a relative issue. That could be like an actual issue that has to do with Saturn and Neptune and Pisces. Do we flood farmland to build hydroelectric dams do what happens when our farmland that that will just get flooded because we can't build a dam there does get flooded and then where are we going to have our food from if we've just flooded other places that we can't use for agriculture anymore right few food security moving ahead into the future now one of the good things is that now saturn is in pisces and uranus is in taurus that there is a sextile aspect between Saturn and Uranus. So that's one of the things is that rather than all the tensions and conflicts between this kind of stuff that's indicative of the square that we were going through, there's now a new configuration. We have a sextile configuration by whole sign. And in a sextile configuration, there's more of a, is of the nature of Venus, we can, we, we can harmonize, we can cooperate, we can come to different sides of the situation can come together and create the Uranus is like the creative breakthrough this side doesn't this different perspectives have different ideas like different things they have tensions and then but out of that comes a creative solution in the form of an inventive Uranus right so that is one of the great things about the Saturn and Pisces is we have a nice sextile aspect to work with um and <laughs> There's another thing that I was thinking about. I there spicy Pisces is always has a spiritual significance. The Christian fish symbol might be one of the directions you take it. If you use the twelve letter alphabet style of astrology, it's together with the twelfth house, which I have to admit. I don't, I don't know. I might as well just give in, you know? I mean, I don't, I'm, I have this thing where I'm, I'm questioning whether it's really that big of a deal to be against the 12-letter alphabet or not, because it's like, I don't know. A lot of people use it. I don't, it's not my 
favorite way of doing astrology, but you can make a point there with the dreaminess, with the, with the, you know, like the hermitage or something like that, like the Pisces meditating in the hermitage or something, and the monk in the, you know, there's a, there's something about that that's very Pisces to me, and my own, and you know, the, this is the thing, in that, what is it? The, I was watching what the, the guys, Chris Brennan and Austin Kopic did on their episode on Pisces, which I will link as well. It's a good one. And they were talking a lot about Leonard Cohen. And Leonard Cohen, one of the things he did was he made a documentary while he was living in a Zen monastery. Unfortunately, this documentary used to be available on YouTube to just watch the whole documentary for free. And I think probably due to copyright claim or something like that, it's not available anymore. So this is also a reminder that don't take for granted that you can, all this stuff that is just around on YouTube will always be around. Um, yeah, so I don't know where to get that, but there's a great documentary about Leonard Cohen being a Zen monk, right? And um, Or be practicing at a, a Zen center, right? And... Um, there's something that I was thinking about the, the Saturn, Neptune, and Pisces thing that could actually be really work for meditation practice, right? Because if you think about that, again, the, the, the image I'm using of the damn wall is that if you've ever been to a Zen center and done a proper formal Zen meditation, uh, you're seated in front of a wall and you're said to not really have your eyes closed, but not, but you're not supposed to like, I mean, you're just looking at a wall anyways. You're supposed to, you're, it's kind of like in between, right? You're kind of just like, and the, there's something about that Zen practice. It's called Zazen, where you're just sitting and looking at a wall. I mean, there may be, I don't know, maybe I'm not the biggest Zen expert and I shouldn't be going into the how to practice Zazen, but I have done it, though. I have been to the Zen Center and I have looked at the wall. There's something about, I feel like this is really Saturn in, in Pisces, especially with Neptune there. The Neptune influence is just going to enhance that. There's something about, it's almost like a sensory deprivation tank, right? Like you're going into the, separate, the sensory deprivation chamber, and it's interesting because in the Zen center, it's a group situation where you're practicing with a whole group of people, but you're seated in such a way that you're all just staring at a wall. And it's kind of like ambiguous whether this is a group activity or whether this is a personal individual activity. Because at some point in time, you may be just looking at the wall and you it may not be the, the, the most present thing on your mind Unless the guy beside you is breathing really heavy or somebody coughs or something that, you know, you're, they're not staring at a bunch of people while you're meditating in this, right? But then what's funny is they, in, they interrupt it with you, uh, in the middle they have a little walking meditation where you all walk around in a line and then you're very much, oh, we're in this funny group of people doing this weird circle walk thing. It is very much a group of people. And then you sit down again, you know, but the, um, there's something about the, the, restricting the attention, right, of the, the having the wall there, of having the sensory deprivation chamber that it's like, instead of, let's say, what, what, this is one of the things why I don't use TikTok. I mean, you could, I mean, I'm not saying making any hard rules against it or something like this, but what I find about the internet is that TikTok is like the opposite of Zazen in some way, right? Because it's just like stimulation, stim and it's not only just stimulation, but it's an algorithm trying to figure out what it is that's, that stimulation will stimulate you. And, and well, most social media kind of works like this, right? But, and the other thing I have to say is that I'm not, I tend to be, could be my Jupiterian attitude, I tend to be optimistic and trusting and positive and not, I don't like to be, I don't like to foster attitudes of fear and paranoia against, let's say, the Chinese government or something like that. And I actually like, I also to say that this anti-Asian racism stuff is crap because you, if anybody's watching this, please appreciate if you live in America and there's a Chinese person there, the Chinese person that is in America may hate the communists more than you do. <laughs> like there are, there may be Chinese people who really fucking hate China, Chinese communism. And that 
to if you making some sort of racist thing about Chinese people just because their government is a certain way is like you you have no fucking idea you know there could be a lot of people in that country who like you don't you know it's not just be or like in Russia right that we don't hate the Russians just because whatever is going on with the oligarchs you know we we actually feel so, i feel sorry for the the poor russian people that are being taken advantage by these pe all these powerful people right it's like um i'm getting distracted here what am i talking about the 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 tiktok that the chinese what i'm going to say about the chinese tiktok thing is they actually have a different version of tiktok that they use in china than they have in america in the version of tiktok in china they have a curfew where you can't use it after 10 p.m. Whereas in China, you can, or America, you can use TikTok as much as you want. And they also, in China, apparently with TikTok, they have, they, they actually, the algorithm is trying to promote things like education and, you know, getting, tra they're trying to condition their children to be smart scientists and productive citizens and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, whether, whatever the algorithm is that they give to other countries i'm not saying that it's intentionally malicious but it certainly is addictive and it certainly isn't the one they're giving their own <laughs> they're, they're certainly giving them a more toxic version of the algorithm a more toxic version of the program which is pretty much a blatant act of psychological warfare yeah i'm just gonna call a spade a spade right and there's this kind of thing about like People who I don't really understand. One of the things that I'm trying to do with this, like I, I have to admit, one of the things that I'm considering with the Saturn and Pisces transit is that I honestly have some criticisms and complaints about the internet culture. That as I, that the thing is, I don't have the ability. I'm not going to just talk to people. Like, like if people get really defensive about this, there's certain things that I criticize somebody for buying a new phone every year, they're going to be upset at me for being critical about them. If I criticize a person for being zoning out on, on their Facebook or their TikTok all day, they're, they're not going to be, you know, I'm not going to, so there's something about it, but I'm not going to, I don't want to make it personal. I'm just going to like put it out there as a general thing that I don't like this culture and I don't want to be somebody who is, um, supporting it by making a YouTube channel. And if anything, I want this YouTube channel to be a kind of like corrosive acid that basically eats away all that stuff, right? <laughs> and so um, whether or not that works or not, we'll, you know, but that's one of the, I think with, when you put Neptune and Saturn together is that you've got a discipline, you've got a practice, and that the, for me, that kind of discipline is like limiting how much social media I can do, maybe also limiting, also the, I, the practice of what is it I'm actually going to put out here, right? What am I actually going to put on my channel? And, and the idea of that it's like a, a dam, right? Like a dam still lets out some water, but it also, it's like you're, how are you managing the, all the water? And that if you're managing the water in such a way, if, if you're paying attention to when Jupiter was there, Ju who's Jupiter? He's the, the thunder and lightning, you know? I, <laughs> it's also, I also have to say that there's, well, maybe I shouldn't say that one. Um, uh, but there's this whole thing, of, what I'm trying to suggest is that Jupiter may have imparted certain gifts and that Jupiter is now doing his business in Aries and Saturn is there. And this is a part of the cycle, right? This Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. Jupiter is going through introducing things to each sign and Saturn comes along afterwards. And you can work with these two planets together in a kind of way that's like in the Karate Kid, as they say, wax on, wax off. You know what I mean? Like it's the wax on, wax off of Saturn and Jupiter that if you can understand how these two forces work in harmony, is using these opposing forces to complement each other will help you to grow strong and and build your um, build up your energy, build up your uh, and and then the, the other thing too is that it, I'm considering if I'm making videos like this every day, is this the medium I want to use, or I could also you make a take a, another break from this and then i could like the way in zazen where you're you're limiting your attention you're not staring at your phone on a million things you're just staring at a, a blank wall for an hour you're limiting where it's all going 
and then you're focusing that into a specific project and that kind of there's that's the one thing is that i'm real when i see my friends who are really struggling they're like well i mean i know people with mental health problems and i don't know if schizophrenia is the, is really a diagnosis that you know that i want to promote like like this is a, the way that we should think about things but there is something about a fractured psyche right and that like there are people whose psyche is completely fractured in a million places and that they can't do anything they can't make anything of themselves because there's no ability to just limit where all this energy is going and just focus in to the thing that you want to do and and make it happen right and i think that if there's any you know i have to admit that i was a little bit there's a, there's something about saturn because it's a heavy leaden plant that's what it stands for heaviness and it's in a water and sign there's something that's kind of depressing about it right there's something that can be emotionally heavy about it but and at first i was a little bit put off by having to deal with this but now that i'm starting to get a feel for what it could the potential that you could work with it more consciously that and to th see it as something that's working in in the bigger picture right with all these other planets that and to incorporate the lessons we've been learning over the years i yeah i'm presenting this as a more formalized saturn because my last video i have to admit whatever i, I had, kind of had this idea that the saturn neptune pisces thing is going to be going for a couple years and we've got a um we've got this uh period of time anyways <clears throat> we've got we've got a long period of time to work with this one or i mean a longer period of time to work with this one anyways and then pretty soon we got something else to deal with but there's something about how you're planting seeds for the future now and there's i think there's a real there's this i there's this potential i think to sort of like solidify the practice and oh but also the thing is like to to there's a something there's a kind of goes both ways like the on one hand it's like building a wall a dam wall against the water but then there's also the force of erosion right there's also the force of repeated erosion wearing things down which is like why you want to build the dam on the first like that's usually why you want to do it because if you don't do it like you either build like, you could also be like a dike wall the dike wall is getting worn down you have to make some uh upgrades so the levy doesn't break as the led zeppelin like, I mean, I'll put that one in there like the led zeppelin song when the levy breaks <clears throat> so this is kind of the issue it's like are you gonna build your dam wall and 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 generate hydroelectrical electricity or are you gonna wait and see what happens when the levy when the levy breaks <laughs> i don't know that's my that's what i got for today all right hopefully you guys like this one and you can like and subscribe. You know, I might even do a special promotion for when I have my hundred, my number hundred viewer. I'm in the, yeah, I'm taking also, I'm taking advantage of the fact that I'm in the world of YouTube obscurity here. And, um, just, I don't know. I do, I want to do my own thing and not be, well, I have to have to do my own thing in a way. I have to, I have to do the astrology video that I would do because the whole the whole thing I have to do it I can't I have this whole thing like I can't just make the same video that Adam Allen Boss is going to do even though I really like Adam Allen Boss that's specifically why I can't do it I have to make because I'm not I'm not Adam Allen Boss I'm I'm me and I've got my own take and I've got my own thing to offer and I have to you know I'm kind of just like is this the medium I want to work in or should I try to write a book or something or who knows, right? This is kind of where I'm approaching it right now. Um, anyway, but thanks for my meager audience and my supporters. Thank you for supporting me. And don't listen to all these people who tell, talk about not worrying about what people think. I, it actually helps to be socially supported and to have a community of people that you can connect with or people that to know that at least it doesn't you know it doesn't have to be i don't need to have thousands of people but to have the right people at the right time then you guys know who you are and i, I don't want to come off as being resentful or being depressed because I, those, these big people have been there right and i appreciate you thank you very much i'm grateful all right <laughs>